Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another collection tour update video. That's right, today is finally the day. I've seen all of the comments, I've heard all of your pleas, it's finally happening. Now for those of you who don't know, this is actually an entirely new room. Over Christmas, my wife Mrs. Collection and I did move into a new bigger house. That way we could get a little bit more space for a few more figures. As you can see, this room is entirely full of glass cabinets. There has also been some refinements made. I've actually culled or removed a significant amount of third-party figures and duplicates from the collection, which leaves an overall cleaner look. You'll actually see that some shelves do have some empty space for hopefully new figures to come in the near future. Everything is a little bit more spaced out. The posing is a little bit more dynamic. And honestly, I have to say, this might just be the best state that the collection has ever been shown off in. Let me know what you think of the current collection room layout down in the comments below. Now before we begin, I do want to let you know where I got the glass cabinets. It's a recurring question. Everyone always asks me, Justin, where on earth did you pick up the cabinets? They're from a Australian store called Shop fittingsdirect.com.au. Link will be down in the description below. They're all of varying sizes, so do bear that in mind, they're not all the exact same. Now what we are going to do in this video is pretty much like the other collection tours, is go cabinet by cabinet. Now as you can see, some are more packed than others, and I will have timestamps down in the description below, so you can scrub through. Say for instance, you only want to see the Star Wars cabinet. You can skip ahead to that, and skip out on all the rest. But what we are going to do now is turn the camera around and start off with the smallest display. And here of course we have the mini display cabinet. This one actually housed a lot of 112th scale figures, but now I've actually removed all of the smaller 112th scale stuff. This room is pretty much exclusively for 1/6 scale figures, and the exceptions have been made, obviously, for the life-size Hot Toys child. Sitting here about to chomp on the Mandalorian Mythosaur necklace, and he does have the shifter knob sitting there as well. I do have him sitting because, of course, the Sideshow one is standing just off to the side here. He's best viewed from above, such as right there, but honestly, I do like having them both. Front and center, we do have the Hot Toys Hong Kong exclusive Winnie the Pooh and Piglet from Christopher Robin. Now in this cabinet, it's a bit of a hodgepodge. We've got some classic figures like the two Freddie Mercury releases, the Live Aid and Wembley version, and Audrey Hepburn from Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yes, I've seen the comments. I now know exactly what her name is, even though my wife has told me many times, but that is actually her figure. Front and center, we do have two versions of Indiana Jones, the Raiders of the Lost Ark DX05 Indy, and the Temple of Doom Indiana Jones from Sideshow Collectibles. Tucked in the back, we do have the T-800 Guardian, also known as Pops, and the Toys Era Venom Tom Hardy figure. He'll be posed up alongside the Hot Toys Venom when he eventually comes out. And to round it off for good measure, a little bit of a pirate flair with the DX Jack Sparrow on his absolutely fantastic Shark Water display base. Coming down below, we do have, I guess you could say, the video game shelf but Hellboy and the two concept art Iron Man and Cap figures don't really count in that. But tucked in the back we do have The Witcher, the third party Uncharted Nathan Drake, the brand new Hellboy, which honestly I really do like. I was surprised at how much I was really enamored by him. We do also have the third party Connor from Detroit Become Human. Now in the center we've got three Marvel figures, the big honkin' amazing Venom Pool tucked in the back, and the concept art Mark 46, plus the black suited cap. He was my previous favorite cap in terms of the body proportions, he's still absolutely flawless, but now I have to say the endgame figure does definitely take the cake. 
And last but not least, we do have Aguilar and also Altair from the Assassin's Creed franchise. The one in the back is from the film, and the one at the front is from the first game. Hopefully, I didn't butcher those names, but that's it for the mini cabinet. Before we get up nice and close to the Marvel display, I wanted to explain the rationale behind how this works. As you can see, this corner is kind of tucked behind this cabinet. It may seem a little bit weird to do that, where I could have just pulled it out and then had it in line with the bottom here, but I decided not to do that. And in order to compensate for it, my buddy Nathan and I posed up the figures in a way where they're all pivoted towards us. So when you come into the room, you can see everyone is facing you. That way you can see everyone, no one is being obscured, even down to right at the back with Doctor Strange. We've also mirrored that on some of the other cabinets on the other side, plus of course with the quarter scale figures up on top, but we'll be talking about them a little bit later in the video. Now we will have to start on the tucked away side and then move over to this side. Just because of the way the glass works, it reflects a lot of light. As you can imagine, it makes stuff a little bit hard to see. So we'll take a look at that side, then I'll move the doors over and we'll take a look at the other side. Now starting off with, of course, Infinity War. Tucked in the back here, we do have Doctor Strange wearing his third party arm set and then we do have the teenage version of Groot plus Rocket just standing there looking a little bit sassy. We also have the Infinity War version of Star-Lord, the War Machine Mark IV, which is an absolute beast. I've also popped the unmasked Tom Holland head sculpt on the Iron Spider. Thought may as well, we do have two Iron Spiders in the collection after all, so it's about time to show off those unmasked Tom Holland head sculpts. We do have the Black Widow figure with the blonde hair and also Infinity War Thor. So I'm going to try and mirror this mini collection here of Thor, Cap and Iron Man on this side. You can already see I've got Iron Man and Cap, so Thor is going to be tucked up behind where Gamora and Nebula are. There's a lot of symmetry going on and hopefully I'll be able to carry that throughout the entire display. Now we do have Infinity War Thanos and of course the Mark 50 right up there in the center. Some of these poses were done by Nathan and I have to say a huge thank you to him. He did an amazing job. Now tucked in the back on the second shelf we do have the solo movie figures. We do have the Mark 47 and the homemade suit Spidey. I'm absolutely loving that pose that Nathan did for Spidey there. We then have the original Ant-Man. I know that building is technically from Ant-Man and the Wasp, but nevertheless I decided to pop it there. And we do also have Captain Marvel. Moving on to the Black Panther display, I really love the way this looks. We do have Killmonger, then T'Challa sitting on the Hot Toys throne, and T'Chaka off to his side. Plus, for good measure, Shuri up the front. Now moving down, I'm really proud of this shelf. We recently completely reorganized it, but as you can see, there are three distinct collections. We do have the Avengers 1 display, then we do have Avengers Age of Ultron in the middle, and Thor Ragnarok on the far side. I really like how it looks. You can tell, as I said, there are three distinct displays. They're all rather unique. Tucked in the side there, we do have the battle-damaged Mark VII, the cap from the first Avengers movie, which I'm contemplating switching out for the newer Endgame version, and the same thing can be said for Loki there. Tucked far in the back, we do have the big honkin' Hulk, Loki himself, the Avengers 1 version of Thor, but he does have an upgraded head sculpt from the Age of Ultron version of Thor. If you do remember, the head sculpt that came with this figure uh, was a little bit dicey. Now we do have the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. being of course Nick Fury, Agent Coulson, Black Widow, and Clint Barton, aka Hawkeye. And we do also have Bruce Banner standing off to the side, so he's kind of mirrored. You've got Bruce Banner on this side and Hulk up the back. It's a nice juxtaposition. You can see the two different versions of Bruce in the display. Now in the center, we may as well take a look at these guys and gals now. We do have Age of Ultron Hulk, and he is a big Hulk and beast. We also do have the Age of Ultron Ultron. 
He's also rather large, he's actually not on his display base, and he stands almost as tall as Hulk himself. Ultron Mark 1, and we do have the Age of Ultron version of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, who looks absolutely fantastic. We do also have Cap and Iron Man, plus Thor, the Marvel Trinity, up front and centre. Then off to the other side, we do have my personal least favourite Black Widow, the War Machine Mark II, and Maria Hill and Clint Barton. So that rounds out the Age of Ultron collection rather nicely. Now while we are down here, we may as well take a look at this shelf, which I like to call the Cap Shrine. I mean, it kind of is that. We do have a couple of Thor figures tucked up the back, but it's mostly Captain America. Starting off in the far corner, we do have Odin from Thor 1 and Thor from Thor 1, the only one with that super classic Thor helmet. We then move on to some of the Cap figures, starting off with, of course, Red Skull in his pleather trench coat, which, touch wood, mine luckily still hasn't flaked. We then have the original World War II version of Cap in the background, that's not the Golden Age version. Then we have Rescue Cap in a very dynamic pose, courtesy of Nathan. Then we have Star Spangled Man. Up front we do have the third party Captain America in the Pop Toys outfit, plus that new shield I picked up from the company known as By Art. Then of course the JX Toys Peggy Carter. We do also have a mini battle scene between Steve Rogers and Bucky, aka the Winter Soldier, which looks absolutely awesome. In my opinion, that pose right there between those two figures really does steal the attention on that shelf. We then have a little bit of a Winter Soldier vignette, if you will. We do have Golden Age Cap running forward, Falcon shooting in the background, then Stealth Strike Suit Cap up front and also for good measure, Black Widow and Nick Fury. I have also popped in the D23 cap, but he's wearing the brand new Avengers Endgame Steve Rogers head sculpt. I think it's a really nice upgrade to him, and it rounds out the cap shrine rather nicely. So hopefully you can see what I mean by me slimming stuff down. There is a lot of third party stuff that has been left out, and I think it sort of helps the collection breathe just a little bit more. Now up the top, I wouldn't use breathing room as a way to describe this shelf. It's pretty much jam-packed. It's the end game display. It may very well be one of my favorite displays in the entire room. It's meant to be viewed from that angle right there. You can see pretty much everyone is facing us. We do have Avengers Endgame Armored Thanos the Mark 85 with, of course, the lightning refocuser on the back there. I think that looks absolutely stunning. We then have the new version of Avengers Endgame Cap, looking absolutely awesome with his brand new mouth plate on. Might just be one of the centerpieces of the entire display. And then, of course, tucked up the back, we do have the daughters of Thanos, being Gamora and Nebula. I've also taken the liberty of popping my Civil War Falcon up the back there. I kind of wanted to have the endgame display as the catch-all for most of my Marvel figures. That way it can be a nice, well-fleshed-out, well-rounded display. We also do have the War Machine Mark VI, Black Widow, and the Ronin version of Hawkeye. And then front and center, Ant-Man and the Wasp, because obviously Ant-Man did have a prominent role in the film, being the one to sort of give them the way back in time to save the entire universe. So he does deserve a front and center spot. Now right up the front here, we do have Star-Lord, the second Iron Spider, the second Hawkeye carrying the Nano Gauntlet, and Bucky plus Rabbit, aka Rocket Raccoon. I really love that endgame Rocket, he is wearing an absolutely immaculate outfit. Now coming down to the Civil War display, this one, in my opinion, is a work of art. It looks really, really good. I'm super proud of how this has come out. 
We do have Ant-Man tucked up the back there. Not everyone's favorite version of Ant-Man, but I personally really do like it. We also have Bucky, aka the Winter Soldier, Scarlet Witch, and Hawkeye as well. In the center we do have Spidey, Cap, and Iron Man. Now the way we've sort of done it is we do have the Winter Soldier off to the left and then Black Panther off to the right, so the two sort of key characters in terms of the catalysts for Civil War are flanking both sides. We then have Black Widow in the back, War Machine, and also the Vision from Age of Ultron. Now we've already taken a look at the Age of Ultron display, but off to the left side we do have the newly formed Ragnarok display. We've got Gladiator, Hulk, and we do have Gladiator Thor right up the front, Road Worn Thor front and center of course, because in my opinion this is the very best version of Thor that we've gotten to date. We then have Hela, Loki, and the second Infinity War Thor that I have in my collection to represent the end of Ragnarok look, and Barbara Stanley right up the back there. But that's pretty much it for the Marvel display. Honestly, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Let me know what you think of the Marvel display down in the comments below. Next up, taking center spot in the room is the biggest cabinet of them all. And of course, it's the Star Wars display. You all know I had to do it. Up the top, front and center, we have the Mandalorian collection. I love this display. It looks really good in person. When you just shift around and see all of the different poses at play, I think it pretty much perfectly captures the essence of the show. Honestly, I don't know where all of the upcoming figures are going to go just yet, but that's a future Justin problem. I'll figure it out in due course, I'm sure. Flanking the Mandalorian, we do of course have Return of the Jedi and Rogue One on the right there. We may as well start off over here. Up the back we do have the Royal Guard and Emperor Palpatine, followed by Boba Fett, the Return of the Jedi version, in a pretty dynamic pose, and two Death Troopers for good measure. We then have the Endor version of Leia and Luke, plus little Ewok Wicket as well, munching on his snack there. Now kind of filling in as both a Return of the Jedi Luke and Mandalorian Season 2 Luke, we have the deluxe version of Luke Skywalker and the deluxe version of R2-D2. I don't know if that's how they're going to stay permanently. If Hot Toys does release another Luke Skywalker, which they potentially may, then I'll probably have to figure out another display method here. We do also have the Return of the Jedi Stormtrooper. Not my favorite design. People always ask me why is that the case? Well, we do have a Rogue One Trooper off to the right. You can see the helmet is slightly wider. It's also a little bit flatter. You can also see those ridges on the torso arm that go around the entire thing and the much larger crotch plate, whereas on the Rogue One, super clean and crisp Stormtrooper, this is pretty much my favorite design in all of Star Wars for a classic original trilogy Stormtrooper. So that's the difference between the two there. We do also have the Incinerator Trooper with his flame effect in tow. I love the way this looks. It's a very dynamic, punchy, vibrant flame effect, and the lights pick it up marvelously. Now tucked in the back we do have Paz Vizsla, aka the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian, and a recent addition to the display being IG-11 with both blasters in tow. We then have Jura Steel Mando and Grogu in the Hoverpram. Next up, we've got Beskar Mandalorian carrying his blaster pistol, and you do have the big old Ambon Pulse phase rifle off to the side, and little teeny tiny Grogu just sitting there on the sand. Then we do have my custom Season 2 version of the Mandalorian with the Art 15 custom armor pieces, including that thigh plate, that knee pad, and the Darksaber. I've also modified the flight suit. You can see it's a lot browner. I soaked it in isopropyl alcohol to take off the gray fabric paint that Hot Toys used to discolor it. I don't really recommend trying it at home unless you kind of know what you're doing. Please just be careful if you're attempting that mod. We also do have 
the gonk droid. I don't really know why he is so front and central, other than, of course, gonk. We do also have a Jawa. This is the Hot Toys one. I've grown to like the Jawa. Initially, I wasn't a huge fan, and I know you're probably calling me either a cop-out or a shill. I get both of those a lot, but I like what I like, and I like that Jawa. We also do have the White Pauldron Rogue One Stormtrooper. This one came with the nice dynamic backdrop piece. I don't exactly know if he's going to stay there permanently, but for now, he does work. We then have two Remnant Troopers, one Hot Toys one being the one on the right, and the nice awesome custom one on the left there. Up next we do have Darth Vader in the background, one of many in the collection, but my personal favourite, and K2SO off to the right. We then have two Death Troopers, Director Krennic, Jin Erso, and Chirrut, plus a Shore Trooper as well. This is kind of the optimal viewing position for the Rogue One collection. You can see it sort of forms a mini movie poster look. I really like how that comes across. It sort of tapers up towards Darth Vader there and really does draw the eye. That is a really awesome display. Moving down, we do have the original trilogy slash A New Hope collection. This one, unfortunately, because the shelf is a little bit smaller in terms of height, it's a little bit more jam-packed. But nevertheless, you can still see everyone in person, including up the back, the Sand Trooper, the A New Hope version of Darth Vader with the interrogation droid, a Shadow Trooper that is, of course, tucked in the shadows. In the next row, we do have the A New Hope version of Chewbacca, the Space Trooper, Grand Moff Tarkin, the Death Star Gunner, and just a regular old classic shiny white Stormtrooper. In the front row, we do have the Han Solo Stormtrooper Disguise figure. I personally still think that is the best Harrison Ford head sculpt in 1-6 scale. Let me know what you think of that head sculpt down in the comments below, but I think it captures his likeness perfectly. Next up, we do have Stormtrooper Disguise Luke Skywalker. They do make a nice pairing, and so too do the normal outfit versions as well. We do, of course, have Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and Princess Leia right up there in the center. And that's kind of, again, the optimal viewing position for this shelf. Looks really darn awesome in person. We also have old Ben in a very stoic classic pose, simply holding the lightsaber. I do need to tweak that pose just a little bit, starting to look slightly robotic. Speaking of robotics, we do have the C-3PO from Sideshow and the Force Awakens version of R2-D2. Now, for some reason, the Solo figures, all three of them, ended up in the middle here. We do have the Patrol Trooper, the Mud Trooper Solo, and just regular old deluxe Han Solo. Some really awesome figures from a underrated movie, in my opinion. The Darth Maul is actually down here in the display for Clone Wars. Now, tucked in the back, we do have both Snowtroopers and the Bounty Hunters, Dengar, IG-88, Boba Fett, and Forlom and Zuckus. They are quite hidden back there. We do also have up front Darth Vader, the DX-07 battle-damaged version of Luke. Oh, and not to, of course, forget Bosk there as well. We also have Bespin Princess Leia, the cleaner version of Luke in the DX-07 2-pack, and my custom Bespin Han Solo. The head sculpt is from Enterbay, and the outfit is from Medicom, but that jacket was actually hidden underneath the Hoth version of Han Solo. His outfit actually had the blue jacket underneath. We do also have the sideshow version of Snow Speeder Pilot Luke, and Yoda sitting on his little Dagobah platform there, the diorama display base. I really like the Empire Shelf. It's meant to be viewed from about that position right there. Now, moving down to the Clone Wars display. As you can see, it is jam-packed, and it's also action-packed. I really, really do like how this has come across. You'll also notice that I've omitted a lot of display bases quite the challenge because a lot of these sideshow figures don't really like to stand up, so it definitely was a balancing act. Now, tucked up the back there, we do have the sideshow version of Darth Maul 
and the Hot Toys DX version. Now we do also have the Sideshow version of Obi-Wan. Hopefully Hot Toys does give us an Obi-Wan, but for now that is a fairly decent representation of Phantom Menace Ewan McGregor. We also have Qui-Gon Jinn. It's sort of meant to be viewed from about right there, and I think it looks pretty darn good. Now starting off with some of the clones, I'm not going to name each and every single one of them, but let me know who is your favourite down in the comments below. We do have Count Dooku tucked up the back, and the sideshow version of Jango Fett. I will be adding the Hot Toys version, notice I said adding, I won't be replacing, he'll be going probably in another area of the display. We do have Anakin Skywalker here, I'll also be replacing him with the Clone Wars version, and probably having this version dueling Obi-Wan somewhere else in the collection. Central, we do have General Grievous, a big honkin' boy from Sideshow, and I think he perfectly suits the middle of the display. Then we have the third party, Toys Works Mace Windu, and right down here on the bottom, the Episode 2 version of Yoda. Now moving on to the right side, this is kind of the later half of the Clone Wars slash prequel trilogy. We do have Darth Maul, this one being the solo version, but he's my stand-in for a Clone Wars Darth Maul. Then Cad Bane in the Denial Disguise, the custom Emperor figure that I use the Sideshow robes for, and a second Hot Toys Emperor body and head sculpt, then Dark Side Anakin. We do have a hell of a lot more clones, and Episode 3, Obi-Wan. Now finally, moving down to the bottom display, this is of course the sequel trilogy era display. Gets a lot of hate, but I personally really do like some of these figures. They are some fantastic releases. Starting off with the Jakku Stormtrooper version of Finn, and then a bunch of First Order troops. We do have BB-8 down here looking up at Rey, and Finn off to the right. Then they are flanked by the old version of Han Solo, and of course Chewbacca. Front and central we do have Kylo Ren. That collection is pretty much supposed to be viewed like that. We do have some more First Order troops tucked in the background, including a Snowtrooper and a Flametrooper. Then we have Resistance Ray, Force Awakens version of Luke. We do have Leia from The Last Jedi, Luke from The Last Jedi, Captain Phasma looking chrome and fantastic, and then we do have Crate Luke, and the remaining Last Jedi figures being Rey and Kylo Ren. This is the Rise of Skywalker display for now, one Jet Trooper and one Sith Trooper, Rey and Kylo from that same film will be going off to the right there. Let me know what you think of the Star Wars display so far, but honestly I'm super proud of how it's turned out, especially that top shelf right there. Next up we do have the Fox slash Spidey slash Overflow Marvel display. This one again is kind of tucked in the corner, but as you can see everyone is pivoted to face us, so that means you can pretty much see everyone as soon as you walk in the room. First up in the back we do have the Toys era version of Juggernaut, the third party Ajax figure, Deadpool from Deadpool 1, the Soso Toys, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, Dusty and regular Deadpool from Deadpool 2, plus Colossus and Cable, both third party releases. I will probably be replacing him with the Hot Toys one, don't worry, I'll absolutely be picking up the Hot Toys release to review, but whether or not he actually replaces the Toy Zero one in the display, we'll of course have to wait and see. Now here we have the PS4 slash now PS5 Spidey collection, it's coming along very very nicely. As you can see there is a lot of room to grow, there's a lot of white space kind of around the display here, it's deceiving, it looks like it's full but trust me, there is a lot more space to be used here. Starting off with Negative Suit over to Scarlet Spider, Advanced Suit in the background, 2099, Spider Punk, Iron Spider, and then Spider-Armor Mark IV, plus for good measure, right up the front here, the Spider-Man Noir from Soso Toys. Really like how this collection looks, the poses are a little bit more simple, but honestly, the colours are striking in of themselves. 
Now moving down here, this is my Raimi era display. Somehow I managed to get this Spider-Man 3 red suited Spidey actually looking fairly decent when he's in a dynamic pose. He looks pretty darn awesome. We also have the Toys era Doc Ock tucked back there and he looks absolutely fantastic with the tentacles all going crazy about to grab Spidey. Next up we do have Green Goblin. His glider unfortunately was slightly too large to have him sitting on so you can see it's tucked in the back there. And then the third party version of Venom. I know technically that's not the Venom from the Raimi films, but it still works nicely in the display. We also have Black Suited Spidey rounding out that mini collection there. Speaking of mini collections, we do have Electro Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Amazing Spider-Man 1 right in the center. They're standing back to back, meant to be viewed from about right there. Next up, we do have the Into the Spider-Verse collection, starting off with Peter B. Parker right in the very back. Then we have casual suited Miles in the Halloween costume and Battle Suit and Spider-Gwen, all in some pretty dynamic poses. Next up, we do have the MCU Spidey display from Far From Home, and I am just in love with how this shelf has turned out. Up the back, we do have Homemade Suit, followed by the Far From Home movie promo tech suit Spidey, and the third party top collectibles outfit set, plus the So So Toys Peter Parker head sculpt. Front and center, the newly released upgraded suit Spidey, looking absolutely spectacular. Yes, pun intended. We also have, off to the side here, the stealth suit Spidey on the beautiful Molten Man display base. Next up we have the Iron Man shelf and this is looking awesome as well. We do have all of the villains tucked off to the left and we do have the Iron Man 1 front and central and then Iron Man 2 display off to the right there. Unfortunately we do have a casualty. We do have Obadiah Stane. He's fallen over onto Whiplash there. I'll rectify that after this video. We do have Iron Monga standing in the back being big and beefy and intimidating. Then we would have Obadiah Stane standing next to him, but unfortunately he's decided to take a nap on us. We do have Whiplash Mark II tucked in the background and Whiplash Mark I. This is the new 2.0 version. Up the back, we do have Mech Test Tony with Pepper Potts standing next to him. He will be replaced with the brand new Mech Test Tony as soon as he does come out. We then have Mark 1, Mark 2, and Mark 3 all in the center. They're meant to be viewed from about right there. Over to the right side, we do have the Iron Man 2 display. We do, of course, have the Mark 7 front and central, and he wasn't featured in Iron Man 2, but it was too good of an opportunity to pass up having all of the diecast figures on the same shelf because that looks sensational. We do have a beautiful back-to-back -back fighting pose with the Mark VI and the War Machine Mark I. Then we have the Mark V, Mark VII, and Mark VI. This Iron Man display looks incredible in person. And once again, I have to say a huge thank you to Nathan for helping me sort out some of these poses. Down below we have the Guardians display. In the corner we do have Guardians 2 Stan Lee. We do have Drax, big old Groot standing in the background there. Star-Lord from Guardians 1 and the same for Gamora plus that original Thanos tucked in the background there. Rather hard to give you a look at him because he's down there quite low but he's definitely standing there. And of course Yondu. Now off to the right we do have the Netflix display, mostly consisting of third party releases such as the So So Toys Season 2 version of Iron Fist, then a third party Frank Castle set, and next up we do have the Hero Lawyer from So So Toys, the new black suited Daredevil once again from So So Toys, the Hot Toys Daredevil and the Hot Toys Ghost Rider from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Right up there in the background we do have the third party version of Wilson Fisk from Toys Works. Unfortunately the camera really doesn't want to focus and cooperate to show you the figures in the back. Up front here we do have the Hot Toys Punisher who looks absolutely incredible and in the background we do have Iron Fist and Elektra both 
from Soso -So Toys. But as you saw, that is the second Overflow Marvel cabinet. There's a bunch of spidey goodness in there as well. I'm really proud of how this cabinet has turned out as well. As I said in the intro, I'm super happy with how this entire room is starting to look. Moving on to the DC cabinet, this is an absolute work of art. I am really impressed with how this cabinet has turned out, except for the bottom shelf. That one is a bit of a work in progress. More on that in just a second. Starting off with the figures on the left, all grouped into their relevant movie collection, kind of in a bit of a movie poster look, we do have, of course, the Justice League. Up the back, the classic, just simple version of Batman, and the Justice League super punchy, vibrant Superman. Followed by, of course, Justice League Wonder Woman, The Flash, Armored Batman, and Justice League Aquaman. They're meant to be viewed from about right there, and I really, really do like how this collection is starting to look. Hopefully one day we do get a cyborg to round out that display. Up front and center, we do have the Suicide Squad, one of the most, I wouldn't say complete, but figure-packed lineups. And they are mostly just Jokers and Harleys, but nevertheless, I still really like how it comes across. We do have Suicide Squad Batman in the background, the dancer version of Harley, which is actually from Dean Knight. I purchased it from his website, along with Nick Edwards, aka The Figure Pit. Check out The Figure Pit if you are looking for some harder to find pieces. They do have some stuff coming in and out of the store, and they do mostly ship to the UK, but I messaged Nick and managed to get that dancer Harley there. We do of course have Tuxedo Joker, the Soso -So Toys Katana, and the third party Rick Flag. Off on the right side, we do have Purple Coat Joker, Deadshot, regular Harley Quinn, and then sitting down below, we have Prisoner Harley and interrogation slash Arkham Asylum, Jared Leto Joker. Now off to the right, we do have the BVS display. This one I really do like as well. We've got BVS, Superman in the background, battle damaged, Armored Batman, the regular version of Armored Batman, BVS, Wonder Woman, and front and center, of course, it had to be the Beast himself, the BVS version of Batman, an absolute tank. Then off to the right, the Nightmare Batman. I may actually move Nightmare Batman over to the Justice League display now that we know we'll be seeing him once again in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Moving down to the second shelf, we do have the Arkham Collection. This one is set to grow fairly soon, so I may have to give it a little bit more space, but as you can see, for now, it's mostly Batman. We do have Arkham Knight, followed by the prestige version of Arkham Knight Batman, Futura Knight Batman, regular Arkham Knight Batman, Arkham City Batman, and then in the front row we do have the Joker and Deathstroke from Arkham Origins. They're all absolutely beautiful figures, and fingers crossed this line keeps growing. I really do hope we get a Nightwing and a Robin sometime in the near future. Now here we have the Burton era Batman shelf. I'm actually thinking about moving up the Zensation Riddler and Two-Face onto this shelf let me know what you think about that, just because technically they are supposed to be in this era, and when Val Kilmer Batman and Chris O'Donnell Robin comes out, they'll probably go here as well. Front and center, we do have Batman Returns, Michael Keaton Batman, the DX14 Joker, the DX Joker himself with the purple outfit, and of course the DX Batman with a dynamic Jackson Zhu Wyatt cape. We also have Training Armor Wonder Woman and the Golden Armor version of Aquaman just off to the side there. They actually may be moved to a different area of the collection. Moving down to this shelf, meant to be viewed from about right there, we have, of course, the Man of Steel display. This one is fairly straightforward, but still looks really good. We've tried to have most of the Superman figures, or at least on this shelf, up flying in the background, so you can see they nicely flank the Nolanverse display. We've got the Man of Steel version of Superman up the back, followed by Jor-El, then General Zod, and the third party Feora. Now in the center, a new-ish collection. 
I do have to say a huge thank you to one of my amazing channel subscribers. He goes by Bob Dylan on YouTube. No, he's not the real Bob Dylan. It's just his online persona. But I have to say a huge thank you to him for helping me fill out this collection and giving me kind of the kickstart I needed to get it going. Starting off with the DX12 in the background, but he's wearing the armory head sculpt and that looks absolutely insanely good followed by the newer version of Two-Face, the Batman Begins Batman. Then we do have Selina Kyle. This actually, the review hasn't come out on the channel as of yet, I don't believe, but this is the DX01 version of the Joker. DX11 Joker front and center, of course, as he should be. Bank robber Daft Toys version of Joker, just there in the center, followed by Hot Toys Bane, and the police officer version of Joker, that outfit comes with the DX01. But honestly, I'm really happy with how this has turned out. There will be more figures being added to that shelf, but for now, it looks really impressive. Off to the right here, we have some classic DC era figures, starting off with the Chris Reeve Superman up there in the air in a very classic flying pose, the angry or evil version of Superman from Superman 3, Adam West and Burt Ward Robin from the 66 Batman TV series, and the comic concept version of Wonder Woman. Now down the bottom here, as I said, this stuff will probably be moved around at some point, but starting off on the left, we do have the Mondo animated series Catwoman, Batman, the Black Cowl version of Batman, Mr. Freeze, and that is, for now at least, the Mondo collection. We then have the Jim Carrey Riddler, and we do have the Zensation Two-Face, played by Tommy Lee Jones. I'm probably gonna move them up, as I said, but we'll have to wait and see. We also do have the imposter version of Batman, aka the Leto Jokerized version of the Bat. We also have the Samurai version of Batman, slash the Ninja version of Batman. It's a bit weird to me that that's from Batman Ninja, except most of the stuff that he wears is Samurai inspired. Anyway, he does look really darn awesome, and I'm super impressed with Star Racer's work here. I will be picking up the Joker, stay tuned for a review on that. Now tucked in the background there we do have the So-So Toys version of Zoom and Flash, then the Toys era Robin. Now off to the right here we do have the mini Joker collection with the red suited Joker in the background, that is the Toys era Comedian, followed by the Toys era Humorist then that is actually the bullet head version of Joaquin Phoenix's head sculpt there on the M-Toys body. And then that one up the front is the bullet head figure with the bullet head head sculpt. But that is, for now at least, the mini Joker collection. Let me know what you think of the DC collection to date and all of those proposed changes. Because next collection tour, I hope to have a few things moved around and it looking a little bit sharper. In this last cabinet, we do have a lot of classic movie and TV show characters. I'm loving how this turned out as well. I know I've been saying that about most of the cabinets in the room, but I spent a lot of time dialing stuff in to get it to a point where I was super happy with it, so hopefully you'll forgive me gushing about how everything looks. Up the back here in the Terminator display, we do of course have the DX13, the MMS version of the T2 Arnie with the rose box and the black shirt, then the T-1000, both versions, the police outfit version and the just regular shot up version, or I should say at least the motorcycle version. Now on the left we do have the Tech Noir Arnie and the battle damaged leather jacket version, plus up the front a second one which I got off my good buddy Daniel with the battle damaged head sculpt and also that arm that's been completely ripped open. In the front row we do have Sarah Connor with a bunch of guns strewn around there. In the center we do have the T-800. This is the endoskeleton from Genesis but I gave him a custom 3D printed blaster there. That actually doesn't come with him and it was quite surprising to me because the weapon he does come with is rather horrendous. We do of course have the T-1000 version of Sarah Connor but for me personally that's just a Sarah Connor figure. And up the front we do have the DX-10 and the third party CGL Toys John Connor. 
Now kind of as the centerpiece to the display, we do have the ED209. It's the breakup line between the Terminator display moving over to Robocop here. Up the back we have the battle damaged version of Robo followed by Alex Murphy the regular clean version of Robocop, who I absolutely love. That armor is immaculate. We then have a second Robocop sitting in his chair and the newer version of Robo played by Joel Kinnaman. I may actually attempt a repaint of this Robo to create a Robocop 2 version, but stay tuned as to whether I'm brave enough to actually go ahead and try that. Moving down to the Matrix collection, it's meant to be viewed from about right there. A very, very dynamic pose for Trinity up the back there. That's of course the third party Toys Works version of Trinity, plus the Hot Toys Neo, the Toys Works Morpheus, aka Spiritual Leader, very weird name, and the third party Agent Smith. And yes, purely by coincidence is he pointing his gun at the Hot Toys John Wick there. Not intended, but still I guess it kind of does work. But a new pose for John Wick, plus I've gone back to the Hot Toys head sculpt. We then have the Back to the Future collection. I am thinking about picking up the DeLorean. It does remain to be seen whether or not I have room in the collection for it, but I am thinking about it. We do have Marty McFly from Back to the Future 1 tucked in the back there, then Back to the Future 2 Marty just sitting on the acrylic riser, and Doc Brown looking of course perpetually shocked. I've switched out the head sculpt, or the mandibles I should say, on my Predator here because the bio mask was getting a little bit boring. He's now in a roaring pose, I really like how that looks. We'd also have Alita off to the side here, still in her handstand pose. I just love how that comes across, hence why I haven't changed it as of yet. Now down on this shelf is kind of the three grouping system once again. We do have Transformers off to the left, the Power Rangers in the center, and the X-Men off to the right. Starting off on the left we do have Blitzwing in the background, Soundwave, Optimus Prime, Nemesis Prime, and Bumblebee plus Ravage for good measure just down below there. And I'm really liking how this Transformers display does look. Whether or not they go ahead and make more figures from the line we'll have to wait and see. Now all of these figures will be being replaced with the three zero ones when they eventually do come out, but for now here's the Power Rangers display. I love it. I think it looks really, really good. Some very dynamic but very classic poses for the Rangers there. They are all of course on third party display bases and I think, as I said, it looks rather good. Plus we do have Armored Black and Red Ranger in the center there. Off to the right we have the third party X-Men figures, most of them by Toys Era, but we do have the So-So Toys Iceman and the So-So Toys Psylocke just off to the right. But the rest are all from Toy Zero, including Mystique, Quicksilver, Nightcrawler, Beast in the background there, and of course Cyclops. Moving down below, we again do have the three tiered grouping. Off to the left here, we do have the Crimes of Grindelwald, Grindelwald aka Johnny Depp, plus his little bird friend down below. People have told me his name is Orgray, I'm pretty sure, and when he dies he remembers every sound he hears or something like that. Nevertheless, thanks for that information there. We do also have Newt, who is standing with his little friends Pickett and his Niffler. In the center we do have the Ghostbusters, of course, all four of them. I never did end up picking up the Ecto-1 just because of its sheer size. It is a very big boy, but the Ghostbusters themselves look absolutely fantastic. All four of these were made by Blitzway. Then off to the right we do have the Wolverine display meant to be viewed from about there. You can see X-24 and Logan are facing off up the front and center there. We then have Logan again in the middle looking extremely ferocious. Then the X-Men 3 version of Wolverine, Days of Future Past Wolverine, and tucked in the very back the Wolverine black suited Wolverine, and also X-Men Origins Wolverine as well. I do apologize for the camera hunting for focus, but unfortunately just because they are tucked in the back it's rather hard to show them off. Finally, for one six scale stuff that's in the main display, we do have the Hulkbuster and the Mark 43. 
I will be trying to find a better position for this guy. He can't really just sit on the floor, it's a little bit boring. I may build a custom pedestal for him, but for now, that's where he sits. Before we wrap up, I did want to show off the quarter scale figures on top of the cabinets, starting off with the NECA TMNT collection from the classic film. I really like these guys, they look fantastic all standing together, plus we do have Shredder and a foot soldier tucked in the back. Moving on to the DC quarter scale figures, we do of course have the Joker by Hot Toys, the Dark Knight Rises Batman, again from Hot Toys, then two Batman Begins Batman figures, one fully suited and booted as Batman, and then the other one in the first night out appearance wearing that Bruce Wayne head sculpt. Next up we do have the quarter scale endoskeleton from Terminator 1, again by Hot Toys. This guy is actually mostly die cast, so he's a very hefty and solid sturdy feeling figure. I really like the way he feels and the way he looks. Then we have some quarter scale interbay releases. We do have the battle damage version of the T-800 from Terminator 2, then the T-1000 with the magnetic bullet holes all attached there looking really darn good, and the clean version of Arnie with just the black shirt on. Tucked in the very back there we do have Robocop from Robocop 3. Now in the center here we actually do have a bit of a Star Wars shrine if you will, mostly dedicated to a particular Mandalorian. As you can see in the background we do have the vintage collection Slave 1, a vintage collection Boba Fett, and of course the matching Hot Toys Kenner inspired Boba. We also have the animated version of Boba, and the quarter scale Boba Fett, one of my favourite figures in the entire collection, that guy has a presence. Front and centre, just because it is absolutely enormous, the speeder bike and scout trooper from Sideshow, and we do have the Return of the Jedi Hot Toys quarter scale Darth Vader. Off to the other side, sort of flanking or mirroring what we have on the right, the prototype version of Boba Fett, the Lego UCS Slave 1, and this is my second Empire Strikes Back Boba, except this time he's wearing the deluxe accessories. Now off to the left on the other side, meant to be viewed from about right there, we have the Iron Man quarter scale collection. We may as well start off with the granddaddy of the MCU being the Mark III. This is of course the quarter scale Mark III and he looks absolutely incredible. Just take a look at that pose that Nathan managed to pull off with that guy right there. Next up we do have the Mark 42 with the Tony Stark head sculpt underneath that faceplate and he looks incredible as well. Next up we have the Mark 43, fully unhelmeted, and I'm really impressed with the pose on him. And last but not least, we do have the Mark 45 in a relatively dynamic, for quarter scale at least, pose once again by Nathan. Now let me know what you thought of the collection tour to date. I will be changing stuff and moving stuff around as I always do, and of course new stuff will be arriving. Let me know as well what kind of schedule you'd like for these collection tours, whenever I have some significant changes to show off, or just on a bi-monthly basis. But that's about it, like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.